Welcome back to another episode of Live in Korea Questions and Answers. The worst thing that could ever happen to anybody recording things is to lose the recorded footage. And so the unimaginable happened. Losing the recorded footage is probably one of the worst things that could happen to anybody recording. I'm missing a large part of the video that I recorded this morning. Well, it's not a very large part, but it's a significant part. It's about two questions on the Q&A session, which I'm going to install right now. The first question that I selected that is missing from the video is, is it necessary to learn Korean? The abbreviated version is that it's not necessary to learn Korean. It's helpful. Uh, as in any case, when you go visit any other country in any part of the world, it's always helpful to know some of the language that the nation operates in. Some countries it's more important in than others. Some countries make it a lot more accessible to be able to function on English exclusively, whereas others uh, don't necessarily make it as accessible. Korea is very English friendly, um, most of the street signs will have Korean and English on them uh, as well as any paperwork that needs to be done in the immigration department uh, at the airport. When you have to deal with things in, internally uh, in the department of, of, of uh, immigration and other paperwork will be strictly in Korean but at the airport um, all documentation is provided for you in at least four different languages most of most of the time it's uh, Korean which clearly is necessary there's English Chinese and Japanese in most cases so it's always nice to know a few words pleasantries hello goodbye thank you please um, if you can navigate yourself into a restaurant and out of it and know the numbering system and, and counting you know more power to you but there is enough people in Korea who speak English quite well, or at least some broken, that you'll be able to navigate just fine in Korea without actually knowing the Korean language fluently. Um, you can get by without speaking Korean. So is it necessary to learn Korean? No, it's not. But it's definitely, definitely helpful. Question number two. Is South Korea safe? And what is the situation with North Korea? South Korea is probably one of the safest countries I've ever lived in. The safest one being Japan. Let me tell you a story. Uh, I lived in Japan for a year before coming to South Korea and there was an episode of a friend who lost his uh, notebook with some money inside. He left it on the train on the subway in Tokyo. Um, and of course anything that's left on the subway is, gets collected by the inspectors at the end of the road uh, and gets shuffled into the lost and found uh, box. My friend went back to the lost and found depository at the end of the day I believe or maybe the next day and he was able to recover his notebook with all the money inside. None of it was missing which is just mind-blowing because if this was any other nation that I know of including Canada you would find nothing. There would be no money, there would be no notebook, there would be no trace of anything of that sort. Um, I have heard stories from people in Korea um, that have personally experienced the, you know, lost wallets and then returned wallets. From my perspective, I cannot vouch for that. Um, I lost a wallet. Actually, I didn't really lose it. It dropped out of my uh, my pocket uh, on the way into a restaurant. Five minutes later, I left uh, to find the wallet, and it was gone. Uh, the restaurant was located near a high school and I assume some kids probably scooped up the wallet, snooped through it and just tossed it somewhere aside. I didn't have a lot of money in there so it wasn't a big loss. It's usually the loss of the credit cards and, the, and some of the IDs that I had. That's usually the biggest headache that's caused by losing a wallet. But when it comes to crime and anything of that sort, there's no drugs in Korea. There, there are no gangs on the streets mingling around. Um, when it comes to violence, um, it happens, occurs, I guess, on occasions, uh, usually after drinking. But for the most part, Koreans are pretty um, reasonable after drinking. People will scuffle, people will argue, but there, even in an argument, there's hardly any punches. There are hardly any punches thrown. Um, so yeah. And from the perspective of North Korea, does North Korea pose a threat? Well, from my experience, since the year of 2005, 
every year is a dangerous year. Every year there is some kind of announcement on TV um, and there is always something happening. But in my view, it's all fear-mongering. Uh, it's there mainly to, to, to maintain the perception of a threat somewhere above, which in the end justifies uh, having a very powerful US military present in the country, which essentially provides a very good market uh, because that military needs to be paid and Korea pays a lot of money to the USA to have that military here. So having a threat up north uh, is, is good business. That's all it is. And it also creates a reason for every single Korean man to enter the military service. Korean men usually spend anywhere between 18 to, to 28 months um, uh, of military service, depending on the branch of military that they access. But every single Korean man has to, has to go through the military service. Um, there are some circumstances under which uh, um, certain types of individuals will not have to do their military service. Um, if they have certain physical disabilities, uh, maybe bad eyesight or, or maybe health conditions, they'll be able to bypass that, um, they'll be able to possibly work in an office, or maybe if they do research in a university setting, then they'll be able to do that, so commit two years to a university uh, research experience, and then they won't have to go to military. So, North Korea threat, up soil. I don't think there is one. Any skirmishes that occurred, I, I don't who, I don't even know if they're real. They're they're on the media and it's talked about, but uh, nothing ever really happens. Like um, if there is a vessel that's been sunk by another nation, um, usually that causes problems. Like you would, if you were the president of that particular nation whose vessel was sunk, you probably would send your ships and it would be war. But nothing like that ever happened. So no. My perception, and I believe from the perception of many other residents here in South Korea, there is no threat uh, from the north, and South Korea is as safe as it gets. Which brings us to the third question, and that's the question of which is the best city to live in South Korea? That question is partially answered on the video, so I will cover half of it, and then I will switch over to the regular session that was filmed in the beautiful park and I was hoping to make the full video. Unfortunately, that didn't happen because I don't know why. But um, I may do and I will release this video tonight. That is what's going to happen. Which is the best city to live in? In my mind, there are two cities that you should choose from. Either the capital, Seoul up north, or Busan in the far south. If you're, um, if you're willing, if you're wanting to have the full South Korean experience with the uh, bizarre, the strange, and the people, and the beautiful women, and the accessibility of English, head out to Seoul. Uh, the only concern is, if you're really concerned about the air quality, then I would say steer away from Seoul, because Seoul has the worst air quality uh, in all of Korea. Busan would be the primary target for myself. If I was coming back to Korea again, I would head straight for Busan. Uh, it's a beautiful coastal city. There's a lot of things happening. It's got the vibe, it's got the beaches, uh, it's got the clubs and the people, and the music and the food, and uh, it's, it's great. Busan is fantastic. You do get some air pollution problems in Busan, um, but they are not as severe as they are up in Seoul, in the capital city. Seoul is a lot more expensive. Um, Busan is a lot cheaper. Uh, granted, the salaries are balanced in order to accommodate the necessities of everyday life, but um, I personally would choose to travel to Busan, and if I had to live somewhere, I, Seoul would not be the place for me to choose. People who live in Seoul, I believe, moved there and have been there for a long time, and it's hard to move. Like, I live in Ulsan, um, and right now I would not choose Ulsan. I don't really like Ulsan particularly, but my life is here, my business is here, and my family is here, and it's really hard to move away from, from all this. So, make your decisions wisely. Uh, if you want to move into the rural areas, of course, if you don't mind being away from cities and you want to, you're looking for the peace and quiet of the countryside, then there's plenty of spaces in, in, uh, in Korea. And that concludes 
this part of the gimmick and we're gonna go on with the same question but in the park uh, there's a few nice cities up north um, closer to the DMZ the North Korean border there's Sokcho um, which is located ne right next to the national uh, one of the biggest uh, national parks it's a very nice city it's a lot smaller but it's a lot quieter uh, when you go into the bigger cities like Seoul in particular you've got the air pollution to deal with uh, Ulsan and Busan are not as bad as Seoul but uh, they are they can get pretty nasty today uh, the air was uh, above moderate this morning it cleared up a little bit later on right now it looks like rain there is a crane. Yeah. I don't know if I caught it. There was a crane flying above me. Anyway, uh, so I'm not wearing a mask. I probably should because I have a cold in my nose, feeling a bit stuffy. So maybe preventing the cold air from rushing in into my passages would be best. Korea is not a very big country, um, so doesn't really, regardless of where you're located, you'd always be able to go visit plenty of places uh, on any given weekend. So choosing a location that um, makes most sense for comfort of living, I would suggest um, if you are con really concerned about um, pollution and stay away from Seoul, if that's not a big concern, then Seoul is a place to be. Um, eh, or Busan. Question number four. What is saving face? I mentioned that in the last video uh, when I talked about it. Uh, when I talked about uh, China, Confucianism and South Korea. And uh, there's a psychological phenomenon in, uh, in, in all of Asia, I think, most of Asian countries. That's been studied by some Western psychologists and has been reported in a couple of books, I think. Uh, and it's the idea of basically preserving preserving one's dignity. Imagine an embarrassing situation uh, of any magnitude, I guess, even the smallest type. A situation like that will make you lose face. So if you ask somebody for a favor and they say no, you are losing face because you went out on a limb and you asked them for a favor and they rejected you. If you're asking somebody to come sit down and drink with you and they say no, you're losing face because once again you went out on a limb and you've been rejected. If you ask a girl on a date and she says no, you're losing face because you were rejected. So basically any form of rejection or failure on your part will result in you losing face. Uh, and I don't know the particular intricacies of how to avoid it other than just you know suck it up or not do the things that you that might put you at risk and it seems like it's just a comfortable way of avoiding risk which would kind of explain the Korean education system why students don't actually answer questions everybody's afraid of making a mistake therefore nobody makes mistakes nobody answers any questions or no nobody asks questions of fear of being rejected that's why middle school students learning English have a really hard time adjusting to that uh, mentality of having to speak in class because in their minds, uh, making mistakes is a bad thing. So they won't be, uh, they're not very willing to speak up in class for fear of making a mistake, making a fool of themselves and probably losing faith, uh, losing face. Um, in their minds, it may not be as, as closely tied to the idea of losing face, but it's, uh, but it's along those lines. So that's what's, what losing face is. Anytime you put yourself out on a limb uh, and you you risk something um, and you happen to be rejected that is losing face and so in countries like China apparently from what I've heard in the most recent past this is pushed into the extremes and losing face can uh, can lead people to demand retribution in some cases if there are some cases that are very severe um, so, uh, I guess things like defamation are also part of losing face. There are instances of, um, uh, I think it's, it's kind of, I don't, I don't want to say it's illegal because I'm not entirely sure that it is, 
but it, it may be illegal to uh, to use defamation so if you slander um, anybody particularly large companies without ground without without backing um, then you could be sued for defamation because um, in their mind that would be part of the whole idea of losing face saying things about another person whether they're it's a it's a corporate entity or an individual and saying things about them that are not true um, it's just not cool on at any level so that's saving face question number five when do Koreans celebrate their birthdays Korea follows two calendars there's the solar calendar which is followed by most of the world and there is also the lunar calendar which is based on the Chinese lunar calendar and so many people do celebrate two birthdays one will be on the solar calendar uh, date and the other one will be on the lunar calendar date that's really it it's as simple as that people usually celebrate around the date um, some not all celebrate both dates they celebrate in different ways but essentially people do the same thing as they do back home the thing to eat for any occasion if it's New Year's or a birthday or any other occasion of that sort celebration uh, is either miyokuk which is a soup made of seaweed or there's tokuk which is a soup made of rice cake and apparently every single piece of rice cake you eat will add a year to your life so duck cook is one of the things to eat for your birthday because it's supposed to extend your life <laughs> it's a fun thing fun novelty fun superstitions every country has its own superstitions Korea has it's got plenty of its own and, and they're always good for a laugh because any superstition is good for a laugh hey have you heard of the one uh, when a black cat crosses your road you're not supposed to cross the black cat's road you need to change roads otherwise you're gonna have bad luck or the one where you break a mirror and you'll have seven years of bad luck or when you open an umbrella in your house and you have bad luck or the number 13 or the number four or okay let's stop there's lots of them hey look cherry blossoms are up And this concludes today's Q&A session. Remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment in the section below. If you'd like any more questions answered, leave them in the comment below, in the comment section below. Uh, if you have any questions about anything I mentioned in this video, please don't hesitate to leave me a message. Um, thank you to all who subscribed so far this week. Um, I've uh, a few more people joined the clan, so much appreciated. Um, and hoping for the for the channel to grow. Remember to tune in on Monday evening to the Hagwon Startup Podcast. Last Monday we had Nini on. Uh, that was a very good talk. Uh, a lot of good information. If you do have any questions about Nini and running your own Cambridge courses in South Korea, providing um, uh, Cambridge testing, uh, you can contact Nini, Joe through Facebook, or message either myself or David will get in touch with her and set you up with that. This Monday we have another guest speaker, uh, a new addition to the Gombubang business world and we'll be talking about what it's like to be a new Gombubang owner and the fun continues. That's it. See you on the weekend. <laughs>